Hey y'all, I am Andrea. I'm Ben. And we are here at VW Family Farm. If you are new around here, or maybe this is the only video of ours you've ever seen, uh, we want to welcome you. We are making this video in relation to things that are going on right now. Um, we here at VW Family Farm, we are farmers, as our name suggests. We are farmers of vegetables. We're farmers of beef. We're farmers of chicken and pork. We're farmers of honeybees. We are farmers of fruit trees and berry bushes and all those good kinds of things. So on this video, as well as probably a couple of upcoming videos, we wanted to address some things going on in the world right now and that will be relative going forward. Even if you're seeing this video um, quite a bit after the fact of it being filmed, this will probably still be an issue. Um, there are news reports almost daily of food shortages. It's been coming for a while. This did not just start in the last month or two. Um, it has actually been coming for a few years. So by no means are we trying to uh, feed into fear mongering, scare tactics, or anything of that sort. But, but we want to make everyone aware of what is going on and what you can do to provide for yourself. We're actually out in my greenhouse right now because it is super windy outside and this just makes for a whole lot better audio on our videos. So we decided to step in here. That's why mostly all you're seeing in the background is vegetables. So we told you we are farmers of a lot of things, but this video is going to be very topic specific. Uh, if you want to know more about our farm and all the things we do, you can check out all of our other videos. But for the purposes of this video, as well as a few others that are coming, we want to talk about meat. So our family, we are meat eaters, and we have got a wide variety of viewers out there. We respect each and every one of you and your choices that you make, and we are glad that you respect us for the choices that we make. And in this video, we're going to be talking about meat. So meat shortages are what uh, we are getting a lot of messages about right now. It's what's in the headlines about what could be coming up in the future as far as meat shortages. But honestly, our food system has been broken for a number of years. Part of our personal story is back in 2012, due to some health issues, we started making steps moving towards raising our own food. So one of the first things that we replaced is meat. Yes. So we have watched a wide variety of YouTube videos. We've learned how to do a lot of different things on YouTube. And one of the things we've heard repeated um, multiple times across lots of different channels is that pigs should not be your first homestead animal. That they will expose your weaknesses, they will get out, they're hard to raise. It goes on and on and on. And while I totally respect that opinion because I can see where people would say that, actually the opposite was true for us. So pigs were our first true homestead animal that we specifically got to raise our own meat. Pigs actually built this farm for us. Uh, we got, we went in whole hog if you if you could say that's a bad pun but we bought three sows and a boar so we were in the pig business from the get-go um, and then we had a long while to wait before we had meat from that because we had sows that then we had to wait to get bread to have piglets to raise those piglets for meat so I would not suggest to you if you are just trying to raise meat to go that route I would suggest get your feet wet with a couple of feeder pigs um, I would probably get two because they will be more satisfied and you'll have a better time keeping them in if you don't just have one. Um, and then try that out, see how that goes. And then from then on, you can decide from there if you wanna raise sows. So here's some footage of our pigs. So we are actually going to take you out to our barn. Um, the first thing you're going to have to decide is what breed of pig do you want to raise. Even if you're just buying a couple of feeders, you need to decide what breed because what breed you buy determines how long you're going to have to raise those for because those times vary. And then also in that, your breed specific types, there are uh, pigs that are more apt to root 
and if you're going to be running an electric fence they're going to liable to root the ground up and ground out your electric fence what we ended up going with is a pastured pig right so like ben is saying there is pastured uh breeds uh, heritage breeds you'll hear them called a lot of times they will have the big floppy ears i'm not going to say every kind but we raise gloucestershire old spots they're a heritage breed from England um, that are known to be pasture pigs. They're also known as a lard pig. So you will get lots of good fatty meat off old spots. And another awesome benefit to these pigs, they are from birth to butcher, they are ready in eight months. They, yes. they grow really quick. They're really long bodied pigs. So that puts out a lot of pork chop, a lot of good bacon and their marbling on their meat is just phenomenal. So what that means for you, if you're looking at raising pigs for the first time, you know nothing about it, that means if you buy feeder pigs, you're more than likely gonna buy them around eight weeks old. That's what we sell them at. If someone tries to sell you a four or five week old piglet, don't buy it, run for the hills. That thing is gonna be sickly and struggle. It needs to stay on its mama longer than that. Um, but if you buy an eight week old piglet, that means you've only got about six months of feeding time and then you're gonna be eating pork chops and bacon. So back to the fact that we told you to get two. That is where you can make this thing start paying for itself. If your family only needs one, raise one for you and raise one for a friend or a family member or a neighbor that can pay you for your uh, what you put in it as well as a little bit of your time which goes towards helping pay for yours because your time and your effort is worth something. Um, it's great to be generous, but if you are going into a homestead to try to make it pay for itself, your friends and family will more than likely be happy to pay you for some of your effort to keep your farm going because they're benefiting from it as well. All right, you can see Big Papa back here. This is our big boar. Um, now, I know a lot of homesteaders raise the smaller, um, what I would call homestead varieties. They take a little bit longer to feed out, but they meet the need for homesteaders in that they're smaller and less big to handle. But let me just tell you, as someone who's deathly afraid of even a rooster, I'm not afraid of these pigs. It all depends on how you raise them. If you interact with them, we interact with our pigs every day. We come out here and we feed them every day. They're used to us. Our kids have ridden on their backs for fun since they were little bitty kids. It all has to do with how you raise them, just like with any animal. Okay, while we're here, let's talk about the next thing you need to consider, and that is infrastructure. Because I think that is what holds a lot of people back from raising pigs, because they think they need a huge barn, really, really super awesome fences and all kinds of stuff. And they're going to have to have thousands of dollars before they can ever have pigs. And that is just simply not the case. Okay, so you can see behind me, this is our big boar and our sow. They stay behind barbed wire. That's right, a barbed wire fence, just like for our cows. That's what it was built for. And they're pasture pigs. You can see there's grass all over that field. They don't root it up. Now, if you're wanting a rooting pig to prepare a garden spot for you, you wanna go with something other than a pasture pig because they're not gonna root as much. But we did not want our whole farm, all the ground tore up. So we went with the pasture pig. We did not want rooting. But we did not start our pigs out on strictly barbed wire. You no can't, way. You can't do that. And most people's gonna know that common sense, a piglet is not gonna stay behind barbed wire. Ours don't stay no. behind barbed wire, are no. not our piglets. They will get out and they'll run through the garden, out to the highway, they'll all over the yard. Anything. Oh yeah, they'll start strowing everything out. So yes, that part of it, you are gonna have to have a secure pen, but you can do something as easy as uh, cattle panels. You can go to like TSC or some farm store, get some cattle panels and some hot wire. Your number one thing you're gonna to wanna to invest in before you start raising pigs or piglets or anything is hot wire and a good charger. Um, that is gonna be your best friend to keeping them in. Oh yeah, no doubt. Once they uh, once they get popped by that one time, they're they're gonna learn real quick. It end up may end up taking them five or six times of getting popped. But if you've got a good fence and a good charger, that's the key to keeping in a pig. 
and especially if it's a pig you're wanting to keep like we do once you train them it seems to us like they are trained for life um, our big sow and board never try to get out uh, they respect the boundaries but a word of advice is invest from the get-go in a good charger and good hot wire or poly wire um, don't go the cheapest you can get no. it you will be chasing pigs all over the countryside so invest and then when you train them just like we don't even have to have the hot wire hooked up out here for the boar and sow it's actually not even for the pigs there is a hot wire going around that pen but that pen has got that hot wire to keep the calves or or cows whatever we put in there from reaching through the fence and getting out into the into the yard or out into the other fields with their mamas so it's not even for pigs because we raise uh, feeders for uh, calves as well stalker calves so my point in that is invest in a good charger so you're not losing your piglets because I know people have actually lost their piglets that they never found they brought them home they got out and they never saw them again um, so don't do that invest in a good charger and then once they're trained you have that charger to use on other areas of your homestead um, and you've got a good quality product next thing you need to consider is not only fencing but shelter and this does not 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 have to be fancy or expensive you can see out there that's a metal um, that's actually called a farrowing hutch that is where um, in a perfect world they would go in there and have their piglets and it has a little roller bar on the front so the piglets can't get out and the mom can all that stuff half the time they don't even use it and they lay out in the grass and have piglets or whatever but you do want to provide some sort of shelter so if they choose to go in there they can if the weather gets bad they can get out of it because the number one problem pigs struggle with is pneumonia that's the only problem really we've ever had out of our piglets and it's very rare here on our farm because we try to take very good care of them but if you're transporting pigs and it's cold and damp especially pneumonia is what you want to watch out for i can't believe i'm actually about to show you this but we are do-it-yourselfers and we're also try to live as debt free as possible so when any project comes up we don't go buy a whole bunch of new supplies we use what we have and so your shelter can be as simple as pallets with tin on it or anything like that just something for the pigs to get out of the weather and i'm about to show you down here this is where our last piglets loved and you can see this is kind of looks junky but it's what we had at the time we put a heat lamp in there they could get in there and then they could also climb through the fence and get back to mom but they had a way to get away from mom because um mom mama sows will tend to lay on the babies without meaning to when they're exhausted from labor so you can see shelters don't have to be fancy you don't even have to have a barn um, make do with what you have but just to be quite honest there are meat shortages right now um, i'm hoping it's going to bounce back but i would say to encourage you guys get started now because in eight months from now or six months from now if you can find some feeders right now you could be having a whole freezer full of food security whereas if you don't do anything right now where will you be in six or eight months so i would just encourage you do it and pigs are a super simple animal to raise for us anyway as far as sickness and hardiness and all that we don't deal with a whole lot with our pigs they're just a pretty um pretty much hands-off animal as long as you give them food and some shelter and water they're good to go but it is a super quick turnaround on meat and the amount of meat you get off a pig especially if you raise a larger breed you're going to get a lot of meat a lot of good quality meat and before I sign off, I have to give you um, my spiel about lard. It has gotten a really bad rap in recent years, but they are coming to find out that lard is so, especially in a pasture raised animal that gets out in the sunshine, it's so chock full of vitamin D, which we are almost all deficient in. It's, it's great for you. It's wonderful to cook with anything from pie crust to um, baking vegetables in it makes everything better and so that's just something that a lot of people will actually throw away but you can actually make soap with it that's what we do here on our farm there's just so many added benefits you can use almost every part of the pig um, there's little to no waste so this is big daddy well he ain't gonna stand still nope he's out and this is our new guilt. 
Look at her. She like her back scratched. You hear her whining? One more thing I, I just thought of that you guys will have to consider is are you going to process these yourself, which is totally doable. You can learn how to do all of that here on YouTube or are you going to transport them to a processing plant? If so, you're going to need some way to transport them. So you're going to need a friend you can borrow a trailer from. You're going to need a trailer. You're going to need some kind of plan there. But other than that, pigs are pretty fuss free. I would encourage you, if you're looking for something to start now so you can have meat in the fall going into next winter, pigs are where it's at in our, in our opinion. Who doesn't love some bacon? One awesome thing is, uh, we are partnered with Gallagher, and Gallagher has sent us an email. Right now, they have got a contest going where you can win a charger, electric fencing, post, and a, I can't remember, I think it's $200 in gift certificates. All you got to do is, there's a link down below that we're gonna link. Go to that, fill it's out- It's on Facebook. Yep, and go to that and fill out all the forms. And you have to send them a paragraph why you should be the winner. They are trying to get someone's homestead dreams started. And let me tell you, like, awesome. I, yes, let me tell you, like I told you earlier about buying quality products to begin with. Don't waste your money on inferior products because you will be purchasing again. I promise you from experience. Then they're done that. So buy a quality product, and Gallagher is definitely top of the line. You will not regret it. But I mean, who doesn't love free stuff? Even if you're not ready to buy anything, go win some free stuff. So we're gonna link that below. And in the description, we're gonna tell you more about that contest, um, exactly what you could win. And then click that link and go there and sign up because why not? But it is gonna be a limited time contest. So if you're seeing this a year from now or whatever, it's more than likely it's over. Yes, so go now. We will see you guys later. Thanks for spending a few minutes with us. We plan to do a couple more of these videos, maybe on beef and uh, birds, all kinds of birds, and on hunting and fishing, and how you can start providing your own meat. Um, it's not hard, it's not scary. There's nothing special about us. Uh, it just takes hard work and keeping on, keeping on. So thanks for watching. Until next time, God bless. Mm -hmm.